Of course, if you use a lot of an uh, antibiotics in animals, there is a problem that that will spawn resistance in those bacteria that animals are exposed to. So it's a problem for animal health, sure. But it could also be a problem for human health because bacteria can spread from animals to pigs directly like this or in more indirect ways. Um, so here's just some of the ways and how it can be transmitted. Um, if you have farmed animals, you can have bacteria, resistant bacteria from this that can go via animal waste, fecal residues, to soil, water and air, etc. And then we get exposed to water, soil, air, etc. and can reach us. It can contaminate the actual product in some cases. If you get fecal mater material, for example, on the meat when slaughtering and preparing the meat, that can be a more direct route to us also. And we know that that happens for some types of bacteria. Uh, sometimes you uh, produce animal feed from other animals and that in turn can, can, can spread, for, spread again, right? So it can go via animal feed. And then of course it can go directly to the people that work with the animals, the farmers for example. And there are actually plenty of examples uh, of uh, where farmers are much more prone to be carriers of certain antibiotic resistant bacteria than other people in society. For example, MRSA. Uh, so in, in some countries, uh, farmers are treated differently when they enter hospital than non-farmers because they're so likely to be a carrier of uh, resistant bacteria. Not so in Sweden, though. So we say bacteria, but there's uh, different types of bacteria, and they spread in different ways. And some uh, of these bacteria uh, spread directly from animals to, to, to us. They are pathogens, both in animals and us. So Salmonella and Campylobacter are two very classical animal pathogens that can contaminate food and we get sick from these, right? I mentioned MRSA, which is actually a skin bacterium, uh, and that can also sometimes spread from animals to humans, uh, but also um, extended spectrum beta lactam um, beta lactam resistant enterobacterias in E. coli, for example, can also spread from animals to humans. They don't spread freely because there tend to be certain strains that like animals better, or pigs and cows, etc., and certain strains that like humans better, but there is a flow of genes, at least occasionally there, a flow of bacteria occasionally, which can be enough. Let's talk about what we can do about it. So, an obvious thing we can do is eat more vegetables. That's probably a good thing from many points of view, not the least for the climate. Uh, and probably, for most of us, it's probably good for our health in general also to eat more vegetables. Because if you eat more vegetables, you need to produce less meat. And with less meat demand, there is less use of antibiotics as well. So an indirect way, but probably a good way. But most of us, at all, but most of us like to eat some meat and do not become vegetarians. So if you're then buying animal products, you could take a look at yourself, look yourself and see, is there any information here that can tell me whether these meat products or milk products or egg products are produced under good hygiene conditions with minimum use of antibiotics? Different countries have different regulations. So it's likely that um, 
for example, uh, meat produced in Sweden is likely to be associated with less use of antibiotics than if you buy meat from, for example, Spain, as we just show here. The comparison in Swedish stores is usually between Swedish meat, Danish meat, German meat, or South American meat. And on a scale, they're using more and more antibiotics. In general, doesn't mean that that particular animal needs to be treated with antibiotics. The risk is largely not that you will get an infection by eating this meat. Probably in most cases it's by promoting the use of antibiotic and thereby other transmission routes, such as the route from the animal to the farmer and then further into society and eventually down the road it may hit us as well. If we talk about particularly Salmonella and Campylobacter, it's about good, good kitchen hygiene, of course. Do you have any other ideas what we can do? Well, we can, of course, act also uh, on a more societal level. These are the more the direct actions that you can do as a consumer, or as a person. But you can, of course, also engage in these questions and try to work to change legislation. Okay, I actually think that uh, this serves as a good natural break. Uh, 